What I think is more important than the money and the financial reward is, as Jim Rohn says, famous business philosopher who trained Tony Robbins, in case the listeners haven't heard of him, he said that if you work through all of that and you get through it, it's the person that you become, it's who you become in terms of your personal development that is really the most meaningful part of it because you know that if you become the person that they could take everything away from you and you'll be able to build it all back. Alan has started and grown several multi-million dollar businesses. His mission is to help you do the same. Welcome to the Business Growth Pod, building the future one entrepreneur at a time. Hey everyone, welcome to the Business Growth Pod. I'm Alan Draper, happy to be with you today. Thank you so much for spending some of your busy day with us. I know that, you know, that's a really big task and, you know, I want to make sure that I'm adding a little bit, at least back to your day and adding some value to help you scale your businesses. I don't listen to podcasts very much, but when I do, I try to hone in on one or two things. So as, as we're chatting today, think of one or two things that you can apply. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed with what we're talking about and you know, the path to success, which we're going to, we're going to talk about today and cover. So go to my website, alandraper.com. Make sure to follow me on Instagram everywhere on social. I'm Alan R. Draper, pretty easy to find. Make sure to follow me. And I'm always posting reels and videos and quick tips about how to improve your financial life, your business life, your relationships, things like that. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the show Jack Gibson. Jack is actually an international serial entrepreneur and financial thought leader. He began his journey at the age of 19 in direct sales from his college dorm room in a nutrition distribution company that he built into a multi million dollar venture before he was even old enough to rent a car, which is kind of funny. After a series of stock market setbacks, He became obsessed with learning everything about real estate, investing, and he actually ended up building another multi-million dollar portfolio, generating passive income. So welcome to the show, Jack. Excited to have you. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate being here. And gosh, I love pouring into your audience. You told me about what they're made of, and this is going to be fun. So we're going to definitely make a difference. So I don't know if mentally you can turn back the clock to your first business foray, like, you know, put yourself in in the shoes of, you know, the startup entrepreneur, somebody that, you know, we have quite a few people that listen that they're trying to figure out if starting a business is right for them. You know, they might be part-time entrepreneurs or just have a couple of ideas. What would you say to that group specifically, the folks that are trying to decide whether they're going to take the risk and go out on their own? Yeah, that's a great question. I can definitely, it seems like yesterday, you know, I'm 25 years in entrepreneurship. I'm on my fourth, fifth company and I can feel it like yesterday. You know, my pivotal moment was when I was 19, I was working on my uncle's farm. I had two dads, like I had the rich dad, poor dad scenario, kind of, but my, my real dad was not poor. He was a professional, but I also had a rich, wealthy uncle who had no kids of his own. So I was in essence, a, you know, adopted child of his. And so I got to watch, you know, the two, a successful professional, my father, he did uh, work for State Farm, investigated arson. So that essentially is you figure out if somebody lit their house on fire on purpose or not, right? So it's it's a cool, he had a cool gig. And then my uncle, he had three businesses. He had a 500 acre, 1000 acre farm operation. He had a million dollar, $2 million insurance book. And then he had a party rental business too. So I got to see how wealth was created. And when my uncle passed, he passed with three, four, five million dollars $5 at a very young age too, 58. And my father, you know, he inherited a big chunk from his father, who was an entrepreneur who ran a company. And so I just got to see like wealth is generally built through starting businesses. And then if you really want to protect that money that you're making, you know, put it into real estate. That's where more millionaires have been created than any other asset class. So I kind of got that teaching, getting to see both perspectives. So I was working on my uncle's farm. 
I put in 20 hours of work, turned in my timesheet, and gave me 100 bucks. And I'm like, what just happened? That was the most terrible work I've ever done in my life. I got five bucks an hour. And even back in, you know, 97, 98, you know, five bucks an hour still was crap. So I realized in just that week, I just started in my direct sales business. I made a $200 sale, put a $100 profit in my pocket in, you know, 20 minutes. So I looked at it and said, wow, 20 minutes, 100 bucks, had fun, made a sale. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, I kind of sucked at it at first, you know, in terms of generating sales. I mean, I was very, very not good at it when I started. And then 20 hours of back baking work, working for somebody else, making peanuts. And I said, I'm never, never going back. Jim Rohn was right when he said profits are always better than wages. So that was the pivotal moment. I've never had a job or a wage job since that moment. That was it, lying in the sand. So I've been an entrepreneur ever since. And I can say that it is difficult. I mean, you would think like I've had all this entrepreneurial experience and I'm in my fourth you know, startup and it's still very difficult. And that's because you have to understand the three stages that you go through as an entrepreneur. So I wanted to dive into that or if you had another question. Let's do it. What are those three stages? So the first stage is essentially where you're putting in 10 units of work. That could be 10 hours of work or whatever. It could be 100 hours of work. But the concept is I'm putting in 10 units of work and I'm getting one unit of pay. So this is the stage where the mantra is and you keep saying to yourself over and over, it's not worth it. I'm putting in so much effort and I'm getting so little back. What is going on? This is terrible. I should quit. I should go back and retreat and go get a job. And the stage one, you know, if you don't get through stage one, you don't get to get to stage two, right? So stage one usually costs more money than you think it does. It's harder than you think it'll be. It takes more time. It takes more effort and it takes a longer duration of time to get through it. And if you are recognize that you're aware of it, you realize that upfront, it is difficult But the rewards that you get, if you make it through stage one, they become incredible. So you get to stage two, and this is where the mantra is, it's about worth it. So I'm putting in 10 units of work, I'm getting about 10 units of pay. Like, I'm glad I'm here, I'm glad I stayed, I'm glad I got through stage one. You're not getting rich, you're not like exceptionally, you know, high earner at this stage, but it's starting to say, yeah, wow, like this is starting to become worth it. And then if you can get through stage two, it's this where you really need to scale and, you know, leverage off the efforts of other people, learn how to build teams to be able to get to stage three, which the mantra there is, I'm not worth this much. <laughs> this is where you're putting in 10 units of work and you're getting 100 units of pay. You're getting 200 units of pay. Maybe you've got your systems and your team so set that you're putting in one unit of work and you're getting 100 units of pay. That is the beauty of entrepreneurialism. What I think is more important than the money and the financial reward is, as Jim Rohn says, famous business philosopher who trained Tony Robbins, in case the listeners haven't heard of him, he said that if you work through all of that and you get through it, it's the person that you become. It's who you become in terms of your personal development, that is really the most meaningful part of it because you know that if you become the person that they could take everything away from you and you'll be able to build it all back. You know, I've heard it said before, something like, in order to get to the point where you're paid for more than you work, you have to work for more than you're paid. Something like that. That's the essence of being an entrepreneur. And I think, you know, the interesting point as you were kind of going through this is for me and and my experience, I feel like, you know, because at the end you tied it into personal growth and development. I think stage one is where 80 plus percent of that occurs. It's during that time where it's 10 units of work for one unit of pay, which is why I'm so passionate about the startup phase, which is interesting because when I first started my business, I couldn't wait to get out of it. I couldn't wait to even step two, let alone uh, stage three or whatever. But, you know, as as we're talking about these things, it's kind of funny because I'm trying to put myself back in my 25-year-old, 30-year-old shoes. And we talk about these things that are, they're kind of, they might sound like a little bit of voodoo, right? Where it's like, hey, but, you know, you're not making any money, but 
how much did you progress? How much did you develop? The 30 year old me, I'd be like, you know, I don't want to listen to this crap. I want to know how to make more money or I want to know how to grow my business. Now that I've kind of seen a little bit of the life path of an entrepreneur, it's like, that's the real value. And it might be cliche. And, you know, you mentioned, hey, I could build it again. And nothing's more valuable than that. Because as entrepreneurs, I think we are trying to increase the area of our influence, what the things we are that we can control. And we can't control the market. We can't control, you know, inflation. We can't control interest rates and, and things like that. But if we put ourselves in a position where if we had everything taken from us, we could build it again, it's a really good position to be in. That's what I formed my platform on that concept right there. Indestructible wealth, which is my financial education company. It's not about having money that can never be taken away because that always can go. It can always be a bad event, a lawsuit, something that wipes out your money. So that's that's not indestructible. What indestructible wealth is, is the mindset and the person that you are that that's indestructible to where you could have all the physical things taken away from you, but what you still have inside of you is the real value. And yeah, sure. Sure. It sounds cliche. And I'm sure that if you told me that when I was 25, I'd be like, you know, look, I just, I want to make money. I want to grow this business. Don't care about that part of it. As you mature, you get a better sense of a perspective. And that's all that really is, is that as you grow, you'll get that perspective. The sooner you get it, the better. How does somebody fast track that perspective? How does somebody that's listening, maybe as my dad used to say, they don't have two nickels to rub together. They're thinking about starting their business or they just recently started. They're just trying to keep the lights on. What's the practice or what's the mindset or or what does that individual do to kind of start looking at things that cannot be taken away from them, that mindset, that personal growth, that attitude of, I went to law school and I practiced law for a while, but left the law eight, nine years ago. And people ask me a lot, hey, if you could do it over, would you go to law school? And I say that I would mostly because of the confidence that it gave me. Just getting through law school, passing the bar exam, and I think starting and growing a business adds to that confidence. And I think that's a big chunk of it. I suffer a lot from imposter syndrome where it's like, Alan, you don't deserve to have, you know, this number of businesses or net worth or coaching platform or podcast, whatever it is. So ultimately, what do we do to kind of, how can we help the listener see around that corner of gaining that perspective before they have to put in the same number of years that you and I did? You know, I think some cases, Alan, the only way that they're going to get it is they have to go through the mistakes. They have to go through a lot of adversity to be able to get through. Like it's, you can tell people all day long, but at the end of the day, they're never really going to get it until they actually make the mistakes, go through that whole process, and then just learn it by experience, right? But on the other hand, you have a certain segment of people that, you know, they do want to learn and avoid those mistakes. And they're willing to learn from those of you know, walk the path before them. So for them and for everybody, the most important investment that you'll ever make monetarily is into your own self. The real estate between your ears is the most valuable real estate and what you feed that on a daily basis and, and the degree of uh, the value and the, the quality of the input is going to determine, you know, the thoughts that you have and the output. So I put out an, an Instagram reel. Look, I can, it's funny. I can raise $5 million in capital much easier than I can get a short form video to go viral. <laughs> so if anybody's out there and you can't get your short form videos to uh, get any views, you know, like, look, I mean, I, I just met with my neighbor and I got a hundred thousand dollar, you know, investment from him. And that was easier for me than getting a, you know, short form video to go viral. But I did have one that went relatively viral, at least for me, it hit a hundred K views. And for me, that's huge. And the concept of it, what I taught was your best investment is not a stock, a bond, a real estate, a crypto, all of that is meaningless compared to putting that money into yourself, coaching getting coaching, going to seminars, reading books, you know, listening to a great podcast like yours, you know, that is the real deal. And that's how you're going to speed up that process of what, you know, you're asking essentially is how do they get to that part quicker? It's just, what do you put up in your, in your head and how much do you value 
your own personal growth and development. And your income will rarely exceed your personal development. And if it does, then it usually finds its way back to your level of your mindset and your personal development. So you want to be constantly making sure that your personal development is outpacing your income so that your income is always trying to catch up to it. If your income's outpacing your personal growth, and we've seen lots of entrepreneurs over the, the years that they're in that boat, their income just shoots way up. Maybe the market was really good. Market conditions were great, or they just figured out something, a system process, marketing technique that just scored. And then sooner or later, they don't grow as a human, don't grow their mind then boom, the income comes right back down. So we want to be avoiding that, of course, at all costs. <laughs> I think a great example of that principle is the stimulus checks that the government will send out. They did some study, and I need to find it, and I'll put it in the show notes. The idea was that like 80% of that stimulus package ended up back in the hands of like top 1% or 5% in the United States within like 90 days. I've been thinking the same thing. I just never saw a study on it. But, you know, it's funny because I've said this recently. I don't know where, podcast or whatnot. I said that, you know, I didn't get a stimulus check. You know, we made too much money to get one. And I was kind of like, man, why don't I get one? Like, I I work hard and, you know, like I'm getting kind of singled out here as not being able to qualify. And then I like reframed it because I'm like, wow, my businesses went up so much. My nutrition business sales, my real estate stuff, my crypto, my stocks, all of that went like up so fast. So because all of that stimulus money started flowing into my businesses, right? So I can see exactly like how that happened and what you're describing. I lived that. So yeah, it's amazing how that all transpired. This will probably make you feel a little better if you think about it this way. You didn't receive any, but you paid for it. <laughs> Isn't that how it works sometimes? <laughs> if you frame it in that perspective where it's like, hey, unless your personal growth, your mindset, the things that you're focused on, the things you're capable of match the level of your wealth, eventually the level of your wealth is going to drop and it's going to look more like a windfall. We hear a lot about the people that hit the lottery, right? These people that they have large windfalls and then they're broke within a couple of years. You know, We all know professional athletes or celebrities that are broke because, you know, quick rise to fame, lots of money, but their personal development wasn't at the level of where they could keep it. But then you look at people like Shaq, who's way more wealthy now than he ever was as a player. Great advice, great businessman. And I think if I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, yeah, 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 I don't want to hear about like my personal growth, my mental state, like what's in between my ears, whatever. I want to hear about just how do I get that money? And it's like, well, you may get lucky, but then you're going to lose it as fast as you get it, right? Easy come, easy go. I have some really high paid contractors that work for one of my business, very high paid. They're college students, age usually, and they can make in a four month period anywhere between, you know, 100 to 200,000. I said I could make 250 one time. So a quarter of a million dollars in four months, very highly specialized skill. But then the money goes as fast as it comes. And they need to, just like you were saying, match that level of development with the money that's coming in and their resources that are coming in. And then they'd be able to flip that on their head. So let's talk about some principles of money and wealth. Let's talk about some of those things. Through indestructible wealth, what are some things that you are trying to educate people about in order to build you know, this wealth that cannot be melted away or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, being an entrepreneur, I went through a lot of these financial mistakes myself. You know, when I, for example, when I was 22 in college, my senior year, I'd saved up 50 grand and which is, you know, 1999, I was doing well. I was just living so frugally, you know, I still had the same basketball shoes from my like senior high school, my senior level year of college, right? I mean, I just didn't spend anything. Banked all that money and then I wanted to invest it to, you know, become a millionaire by age 30. And sure enough, my timing was terrible. I put the 50 grand into tech stocks, the dot-com bubble burst. You know, I lost 50% of that money or probably more than that. And so it changed me to where then I said, you know what? I need to invest into things that I can control and that I understand. And what's one thing I can control and that I understand? I know how to grow my business. 
I'm going to put all this money back into my own growth of my own business, into marketing mainly, generate more leads to do more sales, generate more revenue, get more referrals, all of that. So for the the next 10 years, I mean, I didn't really invest in anything else. I didn't invest in much in stocks, real estate. I didn't invest in at all. You know, we didn't have crypto. So that was it into my business. And that accelerated the path to the business, you know, exponentially. And then there hit a point where I did have some excess cash, you know, started to save up 100, 200 grand. So then, okay, what do I do with that to put it to work? I'm not going to make the same mistakes and blow my principal capital. So first thing that the wealthy think is safety first. So you got to protect that first 100K to like at all costs. And most entrepreneurs, the problem with them is that what got them to where they are, they took risk, they're willing to gamble, they're aggressive. They think that those same traits are going to do just as well in their investing career. So then they take on even more risk. They've already taken on a lot of risk with their own business and having a lot of their assets tied up, uh, net worth tied up in their own company, right? Well, then they go on and they're like, well, this worked in this setting, so this is going to work investing. And then they do really risky things. They buy digital assets, crypto, tech stocks. You know, They want to exponentially grow that money fast. And most of the time, those things, you know, tend to to go against them and blow up. And now they're starting back from zero. So I really am adamant, like protect that first 100, 200K and get it into things that are going to create additional streams of passive income. Take your lower return. Just get into safe things that you understand. And so I teach real estate, rental property, if people can qualify for syndication, you know, that's where um, you got to be an accredited investor, have over 200K filing single, 300K filing jointly. You know, you start hitting those kind of incomes and you start banking some cash. You know, I teach people how to get into bigger, safer deals that they don't have to manage that can be passive in nature. So there's a progression of which most people, including myself, ignore with their capital. And not only that, you know, I've seen a huge amount of people, Alan, just in the last couple of years where their businesses during COVID, they just exploded, you know, and I know some industries really got hurt, right? And then there's some that just, just blew up. And so I see a huge group of entrepreneurs, they were making money really fast and uh, they all put it into risky stuff, e-com stores, and not that those are bad, but they're risky. And, you know, a lot of them lost all their money, 50, 100K that they had worked so hard to save up. So I'm like cringing. I'm like, I have a platform. I created this platform for you guys. So you don't have to do this. And then you don't listen to my platform because you want it to go fast. You don't like that. I'm telling you to, you know, play it safe with your first set of capital. So yeah, I have a five stage kind of philosophy or five stages of growing wealth that I'd love to share. We can dive into that or any other questions on on that topic. Yeah, let's do it. What are those five stages as, you know, we've got about four or five minutes left as we're wrapping okay. up. Okay. Yeah, I'll go quick. So first stage is build a cash flow producing business. It's the Robert Kiyosaki model that he talked about in Rich Dad Poor Dad and you know the rest of his books. Build a incredibly excessive cash flow producing business, live below your means, and then take that excess money and then in stage two, you know, you're going to buy um, assets that can produce additional streams of income. Okay. So this is where, again, you do safety first. You buy real estate. I have a guide on my site that gives 12 different ways that you can create dependable, replenishing passive income off of your money. Those are passive income plays, not active type businesses. You want to be so focused on your own business that you're putting your money to work passively so it's not distracting you from your main gig, what you're really, really good at. Then in stage three, you take the income streams that are coming in from your safe producing, you know, income producing plays. And then those are what you use only to invest into the risky type investments. So I have a rule now that the only thing that I will put into crypto, tech stocks, pre-IPOs, things that are pretty risky, but it could go 10x, 20x. I'm only going to use the rewards, the fruits of my money making money to invest into those things. That rule protects me from myself because I have a gambling nature. I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> so I want I love risk. I love aggressiveness. And so that 
makes a huge difference. And then in stage four, this is all about how do I scale? How do I take my businesses, maybe buy another business, uh, take my existing business to a whole new level? Now I'm really on a good financial footing. I want to multiply my wealth. And then stage five is the give back stage. This is where you know, you don't need to wait till stage five to do it, but it's all about charitable giving. It's giving back. It's being a philanthropist. It's blessing other humans. That's where you're, you're really going to ultimately have the live your ultimate purpose is when you are doing something to bless other humans and to make their lives better. And those five stages are for an entrepreneur. They will definitely create some incredible wealth. I love that approach. I think I need to get more granular with what I'm doing. I actually just wrote a check for 150000 to a pre-seed tech company that is going to compete with Venmo. It's like, okay, this is... And I posted on my Instagram, I said something like, this is either you know, best case scenario, this 150 turns into 30 million. Worst case scenario, I lose it all. My guess is it's going to be somewhere in the middle. But I'm able to do that. It's funny because I think I follow those stages just you know, unconsciously or whatever, like without thinking about it, I think I could learn a lot from being more deliberate about, hey, this is the category, you know, profits from this passive investment that can go to more risky stuff just to ensure that, you know, that nest egg doesn't budge. So, well, that's awesome, Jack. Where can people go to learn more about indestructible wealth and all the things that, you know, you're doing, all the great things you're doing? Yeah. You know, my biggest thing that I built my platform for, Alan, for Indestructible Wealth is to create a community of people that I could have relationships with. I believe as an entrepreneur, and we didn't get to dive into it, but relationship capital is more valuable than than money because through good quality relationships with, you know, with great quality people, then you never know when those relationships are going to create fruits. I mean, I've known people for a decade and we didn't do any business, no deals together. And then timing lined up and they knew, liked, and trusted me. And now we've got a deal we're doing, you know, they're investing a million bucks with me type thing, right? So you've got to always be cultivating and looking at the relationship capital that you're building up. That's what I'm all about. I want relationships. I want people to ask me questions and learn. And I don't charge for, you know, questions. They can get me at myindestructiblewealth.com. And there I have a podcast with 118 episodes. I have a blog. I have a passive income playbook newsletter that comes out every Saturday. So I'd say, just, yeah, just hit my site and if get on the newsletter and then let's cultivate a relationship. If you like what I teach you and have to say, then you know maybe we could do a deal. Maybe you could join my academy program. Maybe nothing ever happens and you just get some value from me. Love it. Well, thanks for joining us today, Jack. Wish you nothing but success in the future. Thank you so much, Alan. Appreciate you having the opportunity. Thank you. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please leave us a rating. And for daily inspiration and business tips, follow Alan on Instagram. Until next time, remember, we build the future one entrepreneur at a time. Mm-hmm.